Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, excuse me, and I will have to speak in English. Uh, I'm not yet a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor after one month, inshallah. I'm going to graduate from Al Faisal University in Riyadh. It's a new university. I'm the first batch. We are the first batch in that university. It's a private, non profit university, and it is based on research. So I was thinking about a topic that would be of significance for you as students who are going into the higher education soon. Now what we mean by higher education is the, when you go into the university or college. And I was thinking they asked me to put something related to the community. And I selected a topic which is called research. And I assume that everyone knows what is research as a term. But in simple, research is a way to produce knowledge. In higher education, when you go into the university later on, you will be either of two. You will be either a knowledge consumer, which the one who is consuming the knowledge in class, or later on you will be a knowledge producer, who is someone is contributing to produce knowledge. And this is the typical way in the West where they teach their students to be knowledge producer and to be active learners. So when I went to this university, it was the first, and it, it was very new and private, the first private medical college in Saudi Arabia. And uh, they were putting the foundation for this college. So we are part of founding this college. So I will tell you about the story, how we built our research program in that university as students, okay? Now, someone might say, why I'm, I'm talking about research? Is it important as a medical student or any other students? Is it important for me to focus on research? Now, let me tell you one thing. Research has, or medical students involvement in research, or generally students involvement in research, has changed the practice of medicine in many ways, okay? All of you know what is insulin, which is a hormone produced from the pancreas, from Langer hands, eyelids of Langer hands. Who discovered that hormone? It was a medical student who discovered it in his lab, where he was working in one of the laboratories, and he discovered it. And today, insulin is a primary way of treatment patients with diabetes. There are other also stories for which medical students have changed the practice of medicine. There is another medication called aspirin, where they use it for patients with cardiovascular problems. And it is a primary drug that is used every day in every country. If you go back, sir. This was Paul Langerhans, who is the one who discovered the insulin. Okay. Now, these two also are medical students. They discovered something called the sinoatrial node. It is a structure, small structure in the heart, which is involved in originating the impulses of the heart. I'm trying to keep it simple. I know you might, you might face some difficulty, but I will try to keep it simple. And they discovered it in the lab, and today it is, uh, uh, it is in every book, and it is by the name of students. Now, in USA, in 1998, I'm telling you about facts which you will see in higher education later on when you go. In 1998, in the USA, they witnessed that their students are graduating without being able to think critically, to communicate effectively, and to be innovative. And they thought that they should do something about this. And when they surveyed the universities, they have found that the, research, the students' involvement in research was not very much strong. So they made a quote. They published a report called Boyer Commission Report in 1998. And they put this statement for the research-based universities, which says that the research universities have often failed and continue to fail their undergraduate students. Why? Because thousands of students are graduating without seeing the famous professors or tasting the genuine research. And they made a guideline, a guideline of four uh, recommendations that you have as a research-based university to implement the students' engagement in research. Why? Because they, 
what is the difference between someone who is studying in high school and someone who is studying in university? Later on, when you go into the life of university, you will see that you will become an independent person, a person who should seek the knowledge rather than to receive the knowledge. All right? And the best way to seek the knowledge is through research. Now, who is in the house here is willing to go for medical school? Anyone is intending for a medical school? No one? <laughs> All right. So, it, even if it is not a medical school, it, uh, even in other specialties, everything is based on research these days. Okay. At least in, our, in the medical, uh, from medical perspective, they found that research improves the students in several ways. Aside from the, be, uh, helping them to think critically, communicate effectively, it enhances the postgraduate research experience. The student, after he finishes his undergraduate and he's willing to go for a postgraduate to do a research that would improve his ability later on. Improves the employment. As a medical student, we have to compete with worldwide uh, doctors from everywhere. So we have to have this record of research so we can compete with other students. And third one, it creates something called non-isolated physicians. Now the trend in the USA for those who want to go to medical school, you cannot be a doctor alone. Today the practice is that you have to be a doctor and you have to be a researcher. Now, when we, this is the logo of Al Faisal University, and this is the logo of the Medical Student Association. So we thought, how should we pursue this research environment? How we should facilitate for ourselves a research environment that help us to dispel our skills? So we thought of something called Student-Centered Re Undergraduate Research Committee. It is, a, it is a committee that deals with all the issues related to research to the students. Now, what is distinguished about this committee, it is everywhere in the West. Now, in, the, in, U, uh, in KSA and other Arabian countries, you cannot find uh, someone who is dedicated, dedicated to serve uh, research for students. You will have to do something on your own. So we thought of creating a research committee for ourselves. It is organized, established, and led by students However, it is supervised by the faculty. We have faculty advisory board which help us to uh, process our uh, plans. Go ahead. Okay. What we did in this research committee, we have established nine programs. I will go over these nine programs quickly. And we have established for ourselves a funding program too. It is a full-time, let me tell you, it is a full-time dedicated faculty job in any research-based university outside. What is I'm going to present, it is all done by the students. So we thought of nine programs that can increase the pool of opportunities for students to participate in research. We thought of creating international research program. And now this program has been there for three years. With, more, with collaboration with more than 20 universities in USA. These universities, I will, give, I will show you on a couple of slides the names of these universities. Also, we thought of implementing a local research program in collaboration with King Faisal, with King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center and King Abdelaziz City for Science and Technology. We also created groups that serve the community through research. We tackled some problems related to the community and we formulate our own groups where they serve a, a specific issue. And we had the students working in the lab and working on patients. Now the, the research, it can be either a clinical research in the hospital or a laboratory based research, something where you deal with the agents and like uh, most of the times what uh, Mr. Mahmoud Abu Aqil would tell you in the lab. We also created a program for knowledge dissemination. We called it Knowledge Dissemination Program, where our students, after they do the research, we get them 
to present their findings in conferences outside in the US, in Canada, and in Europe, and as well in local uh, hospitals. We involve the female strongly in this because there is a worldwide challenge for the females to contribute in research. And there is, they call them outside the minority. They don't contribute in research as the males. So we paid attention to this problem, so we involved them from early on, even in the leadership of the committee too. We have this, because as a medical student, you cannot perform research and you do all your academic load, so we try to uh, look for something called protected time, which is the summer where everyone is free and they go for a summer and they do research outside. And it could be sometimes for talented students through the academic year. And funding. Now the funding, I had interesting story with the funding. I offered this idea or these nine programs to many people and unfortunately I didn't find too many people welcoming until I found someone called Prince Khalid bin Fahad bin Khalid and we offered him this program. He requested us to produce a report about the program or about the committee as a whole. And we created a, a report of 20 pages and we offered him that report and kindly he agreed to fund us over a million over the course of five years, which we are retrieving our funding from that uh, source. We also created an awarding program to improve the retention of students into research. If you see, I have been to the US and I almost have done a research for, less, uh, for almost half a year. And I found something very strange there. I found all the medical students, they come into the lab where I'm coming to. But the difference is that they get their students there. They pay them a reward every week, $900 to stay in the lab, just to watch the process of research. Why they are doing this? They feel that there is a need for more researchers in the future. Even the US, which is the country by far the leading country in the all aspects, they are still working on this aspect because they feel that they are in need for this in the future. And we also report our findings through the literature. We publish our work as a research. We do research, but we publish our models as a research based in the literature. And we do training. What we do, what I mean by training, we train the junior medical students, the students who are in the first year, second year, on how to handle a research committee so they can take over after we leave. Now, our collaboration, as I said, has been with more than 20 universities in, the, in USA and Canada including the biggest universities you can think of, such as Harvard Medical School, Yale, Brown University, Vanderbilt, University of Manitoba. I just brought a few examples. And the interesting thing that when our students have been there performing research for over three to four months over two consecutive summers, we witnessed that the students are really very much, I would say, skilled as their students, if not better. So that's achievement we feel that we have contributed to. Now, I told you earlier that there was a medical student who, is, who discovered insulin and a medical student who discovered the uh, other medications and other inventions. Well, we have some students through our program where they were serving in the lab and they have discovered interesting findings which had to come by their names. If you see here, the first name, it's at turkumani Hani, Jamal at turkumani It is one, uh, it's my colleague, he is my colleague at Al-Faisal University. Now this is how research is presented, uh, if you know uh, PubMed. Now, he was put the first, why? Because he discovered that thing. And all the other names are Western names. So there, if he did not contribute that significantly, they wouldn't have placed him as the first one on that paper. He was working in the lab and he was, sometimes you find discoveries in the lab by chance. And they say chances favor the prepared minds.
Also, the, uh, this shows other achievements of our students internationally. We have some students who achieved the first prize over 200 research in USA. No, 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 no. Our achievements as overall, over 250 medical students have benefited from this committee. We have over 20 research centers, collaboration with more than 20 research centers. We have two research centers locally, and we have over 50 students who have been outside to present, and we have over 35 research publications in the literature. Now, my last thing is about my specific story with Darryl Ficker. And I have been into Darryl Ficker not uh, my father paid me, I have got, alhamdulillah, scholarship into Dar al-Fikr and I stayed for three years. And before entry to Dar al-Fikr, I thought about it. It could be a challenge for me, especially it is the social level is there, different, plus the English language. And I was hesitant whether to continue with Dar al-Fikr or not to continue. And let me tell you now tell you one thing. I have offered three scholarships at the same time to study outside. And I pursued with Dar al-Fikr. And I found Dar al-Fikr after spending five years in the medical school that they are doing amazing. They are preparing the students not to be oriented to the knowledge or individuals who memorize the knowledge, but rather individuals who can be a leader in one day. And the interesting, the most, now what I have said is not my achievement at all. My achievement in life was the best thing that happened to me is that I entered that figure for two important reasons I will tell you now. First one, in one day I was never thinking that I would be able to memorize the whole Holy Quran, alhamdulillah. And through my entry to that figure, I met someone called Mr. Ibrahim al Khanj. And one day he came to me and he said, why, you, why don't you think about memorizing the whole Quran as I was memorizing part of it? Oh, I thought it's not a feasible fact at all. And he was trying to convince me and he was persistent. And I got into a summer course with him. And alhamdulillah, in two months, I finished the whole Holy Quran. And after that, not only that, I would... Previously, I was a very shy person. I would not ever think of reci reciting or doing recitation in front of a pe of of group of audience. And I broke that barrier in Dar al-Fikr school. And I found that I have, alhamdulillah, not as good as Faris, but I have a good sound. And I have been for the past seven years leading people through Taraweeh. Two of them, two years I was in the US and I was leading people there and four years here in uh, Saudi Arabia. And that is the best achievement in my life that happened to me that I entered Dar al-Fikr through which I was able to memorize the Quran and to break the barrier. Thank you very much. <laughs>